is his death, burial, and resurrection all you need. Turn with me in your Bibles this morning to the book of Ruth in chapter 2. Book of Ruth in chapter 2. And I think we'll just read one verse. Verse 1. And Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's, a mighty man of wealth, of the family of Elimelech, and his name was Boaz. <coughs> I find it curious. And that's, humanly speaking, that uh, Brother Mike, devotion this morning was on wealth, on treasures, because that's going to be the main thrust of our message this morning. I've titled this, A Mighty Man of Wealth. A Mighty Man of Wealth. In this verse, we are introduced to Boaz, who's a very important character in the book of Ruth. Not, not of Naomi's family, and we'll have more to say about that later, but of her husband's family. She did not apply to him for help. Remember? Her and her daughter-in-law, Ruth, came back from the land of Moab, and they came back empty. Physically, they had nothing left. And spiritually, Naomi was spiritually drained. She had robbed herself those 10 plus years in Moab, spiritually. And we do. Anytime that we follow after our own devices and our own ways and we go a journey and off away from God, we rob ourselves spiritually. And, and as I pointed out in, in past messages, that can be to us who are here today. We might be here and, and appear to be in the presence of the Lord, but we're a million miles away. And you know if that's you or not. Notice that this chapter opens with the words, and Naomi had a kinsman. I've heard people say, married couples, why well, didn't marry his or hers family? I married him or her. Well, yes, you did. <laughs> when, when you got married, 
his or her kinsman became your kinsman. And that's, that's biblical. You read, you read the Old Testament instructions and, and the, the prohibitions and, and, and the, the admonitions uh, to them were just, just as a binding on in-laws as it was on immediate family members. So, yes, that it stipulates that it was of her husband's, but yes, Naomi had a kinsman. It was of her husband's side, but nonetheless, he was a kinsman. And the law, which this is the period that this was written under the law, the law was not only to Naomi, but was to her daughter-in-law as well. In other words, if the kinsman was going to redeem Naomi, they had to also redeem Ruth. And we might have more to say on that before we're done with the book of Ruth. This kinsman, as our verse tells us, was Boaz. Boaz is a picture of God's Son. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ. Our greater Boaz. Ruth, without Boaz, could have never entered into God's promises and covenant. Never. She was a Moabite. And without the promises of God and without the covenant of God, she would have been lost. Eternally. And so would we without the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> we would be forever condemned, doomed. Go back to the book of Ephesians in, in chapter 2, and, and yes, we've a few weeks ago looked at these verses, 12 and 13, but to read them again, that at that time ye were without Christ. <laughs> what time? Well, previously we were dead in our sins and our trespasses. being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. What an awful situation to be in. But that's everyone without Christ. Amen. But now... <laughs> In Christ Jesus. <laughs> you see, all that is reconciled in Christ Jesus. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. 
We just sang about the blood of Christ. <laughs> or Brother Ron did. I, I need no other plea. It is enough <laughs> that Jesus died Amen. for me. And so Jesus said in the book of John chapter 14 and verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. What was he saying? He said there's one way. And I have people of all different denominations say to me, well, what makes the difference? We're all working to get to the same place. Well, no we ain't. All of you are working, but I'm not working. I'm going there on the basis of what the Lord Jesus Christ did. And that was with Jesus' words. And so, the apostle Peter, when he's standing before, the, when Peter and John were standing before the magistrates in Acts chapter 4, he said, Neither is there salvation in any other than who? Than Jesus Christ. For there is none other name than the name Jesus. Under heaven, given among men, where my, we must be saved. No other name. Not Muhammad. Not Confucius. Not Kesara Sara. <laughs> but Jesus. Boaz was the one who was able and willing to redeem Ruth. His ability is expressed here in this verse. And as we continue on through and get over into the third chapter of the book of Ruth, we're going to see his willingness. The Lord Jesus Christ was able and willing and will save all who come unto him. Turn with me to the book of Hebrews. book of Hebrews chapter 10. In verse 9. Then said he, don't need to tell you, do I, that this was Jesus Christ. Then said he, lo, or behold, I come to do thy will. What is expressed in I come? What is expressed in I come as a voluntariness, a willingness to come? To do thy will, O oh God. In other words, he willingly came to do the will of God. He taketh away the first that he may establish the second covenant by the which will by the which will <laughs> by his willingness and his will we are sanctified we are set apart and made holy.
through the offering. Did you get that? Offering. Offering signifies a willingness to offer. We put in our tithes and our offerings, and that ought to be with a willing heart. Yes, we're commanded to do it. But we ought to willingly do it, too. Through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Look at Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7 and verse 24. But this man, Jesus, in comparison to Melchizedek and in comparison to the, the great high priest, but this man, because he continueth ever, this man, Jesus, is eternal. hath an unchangeable priesthood. <laughs> Wherefore he is able. That word able goes to ability. It, it goes to suitability. He is suit, for suitable. That is, he was perfect, holy, blameless and it goes to his ability to do it. He has all the resources available. Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him. <laughs> you see, there's only one way If you expect to approach unto God, if you ex expect to approach into His presence, into heaven itself, there's only one way. And it's by this man. This man, Jesus. Seeing He ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us who is now setting forth His suitability, holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices first for his own sins. He had none. And then for the peoples, for this he did once when he offered up <laughs> willingly himself. And so therefore, he says in the book of John, in chapter 10, in verse 11, he said, I am the good shepherd, the good shepherd giveth his, giveth, giveth, his life for the sheep. Verse 15, he said, As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. You see, it was willing. It was a willing sacrifice. It was a willing offering to God. And thus we're told by Jesus, in John chapter 15 and verse 13, greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. So Jesus Christ most definitely was able and willing to save his people. Now, the name Boaz 
in the Hebrew means fleetness. But it comes directly from a Hebrew word which means in him is strength. <laughs> and that is the Greek meaning of the word Boaz as well. Our text, verse 1 of chapter 2, says that he was a mighty man. He was a mighty man of wealth. It says, this, this means that he was a strong man, but it doesn't necessarily go to as in strength, physical strength. Although that is implied too. But I think Boaz had a greater strength than that which was physical. <laughs> and the word wealthy means strength, mighty, wealth, army, ability. In other words, it is a word that expresses great wealth, and because of great wealth, there is strength and might. There is ability. <laughs> an army of riches, an army of wealth at his disposal. I am immediately, how many of your minds went to Silver and gold. Well, obvious, Boaz had that. I mean, he was a landowner. Crops, he had hired servants. But see, as Brother Mike pointed out in his devotion this morning, there's a greater wealth in Boaz than silver and gold. And it's what you and I ought to be wealthy in this morning. He was, he was full of mercy. Full of compassion. Full of grace. All oh, that's not expressed in verse 1. But before we get through the book of Ruth, I trust that God will make you to see that. That was Boaz. Is not this a type of God? Is not this a type of our God, the Lord Jesus Christ? Look with me at the book of Job in chapter 36. Job 36 and verse 26. Behold, God is great. <laughs> that is, He's... he's He's excellent. And, and that, word, that, that word in the Hebrew comes from a word that means to, to increase. Not that God increases in it because that would denote change. And we know that he does not change. But it's, it's for our fine mind, finite minds to grasp hold that he is increased much greater than we are. It magnifies. God is magnified. He's excellent. Psalms 36. 
In verse 7, we read, How excellent is thy loving kindness! How great, how excellent, how magnified is thy loving kindness! And that word loving kindness, it goes to kindness and mercy. Oh God. Therefore the children of men put their trust under the shadow of thy wings. Because he is great. He is magnified. He is excellent. In kindness of mercy to us. Chapter 57 of Psalms. In verse 10. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Thy, thy mercy is, is excellent. Thy mercy is, is magnified. That, as is his truth. You want to know truth? <laughs> Don't look at me, I'm just a man. Don't look at Brother France, he's just a man. Don't look at Brother Ron, he's just a man. But look to Jesus. The 103rd Psalm. And by the way, this verse is in your bulletin this morning. Psalms 103. In verse 8. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger and plenteous. Plenteous. Abundant. Increased. <laughs> magnified in mercy in the 145th psalm says well nearly identically verse 8 the Lord is gracious and full of compassion slow to anger and of great mercy the Lord is good to all and his tender mercies are over all his works Yes, Boaz being full of mercy, full of compassion, full of grace was a type of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because of the great wealth of, of our greater Boaz, the Lord Jesus Christ, we are saved. Romans chapter 3 and verse 24 says, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Says in whom? In, in, in whom then? In Christ Jesus in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Oh yes, he's full of grace. Hey, I mean, he's rich in grace. And, and look what flows, flows from his grace over in the second chapter in, in, in verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love where he really loved us, you see, his mercy and his love are, are flow from his grace. Wow. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up 
together and made us set together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches the what? the exceeding riches <laughs> oh man has never known such wealth oh to be rich in grace Oh, you and I can increase in grace, increase in riches of grace, but we'll never equal his exceeding riches of grace. And his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Oh, just, just, just step back and try to contemplate the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness and his mercy and his love toward you. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. It's exciting. And we can't even begin to comprehend it. Oh. So 1 Corinthians 1 in verse 30 said, but of him, of God, are ye in Christ Jesus, who has made unto us wisdom He's made unto us wisdom. What is wisdom? Jesus Christ. What's Jesus Christ? Full of grace full of mercy, full of compassion. We're to, we're to be too. We're commanded over and over to be merciful, to be full of compassion, to have bowels of mercies, to be gracious to people. And righteousness... <laughs> And sanctification. You see, we're only holy in Him. We're only righteous in Him. And we only have redemption in Him. We were, we were spiritually bankrupt. Without strength. But Jesus, God's Son, came to redeem us. Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Look at verse 6. For when we were yet without strength, you want to know what that means? We'll put a little mark there and, and write Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. And you will be dead in trespasses and sins. Walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. He who works in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we had our manner of life, our behavior, in the lust of the flesh, in the lust of the mind. And we're by nature the children of wrath. And because we were dead, we had no strength. Amen. Mr. Armenian, 
tell me how someone who is dead and has no strength, has no ability to do anything, how he's going to do anything to come to Jesus. Apart from but God. <laughs> Verse 6 said, For when we were yet without strength in due time. You want an exposition of in due time? <laughs> in the fullness of time, when it was God's appointed time, Christ died for the ungodly. You see, not everyone thinks they're ungodly. There was a time when I didn't think I was, I thought I was pretty good. And I would have said, well, because I'm in Christ Jesus. But I had no idea what that meant. Verse 8, but God, <laughs> there's a but God, commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. There's grace, his love flowing from his grace to us. So we read in Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3 and verse, verses 3 through 5 says, For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. That is, before time, when we were dead in trespasses and sins. We were foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, and living in malice and envy. Hateful and hating one another. That describes me. That's what I was. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward men appeared. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Oh God. <laughs> and lastly, Our title is a mighty wealthy kinsman. Let me ask you this. Do you have a mighty wealthy kinsman? Do you have a mighty wealthy kinsman? Hebrews Chapter 2, in verses 10 through 17, we read this. For it became him, that is Christ Jesus, it became Christ Jesus, for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. It became him. It became him what? <laughs> to become a man and suffer. Being put to death. For both he that sanctifieth, he that sets apart and makes holy, and they who are sanctified, set apart, and made holy, are all a one. Mm -hmm. 
The sanctifier is Jesus Christ. The sanctified are us who have been set apart and made holy by him. And we're one with him. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Kinsmen. Amen. Saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. In the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God has given me. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, that's you and I, he also, Jesus Christ, himself, likewise took part of the same flesh and blood, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. And then he became a man, became flesh and blood. The seed of Abraham kinsmen. Wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. He became my kinsman that he might be my kinsman redeemer. And he's a mighty, wealthy kinsman. Do you have a mighty, wealthy kinsman? Shall we stand and have a song?